Hi, I'm Lauren Perlman, a respiratory therapist here at Boston Children's Hospital, and today I'm going to demonstrate to you many different interfaces available for non-invasive ventilation, both via a dual limb mechanical ventilator and a single limb standard BiPAP or CPAP device as utilized in hospital and in home. Um, please note that your equipment may be different than what we utilize here and your practices may be different as well than what we do here at Boston Children's Hospital. So I'm going to demonstrate to you what we have available to us here. Let's start with non-invasive ventilation via a single limb uh, device which can provide uh, continuous descending pressure which is CPAP or BiPAP which would be bi-level uh, positive airway pressure. So for the purpose of this demonstration uh, our little uh, our little doll here is about 13 months and 8 kilos and uh, he came into the emergency room with some amount of respiratory distress first utilizing oxygen and then due to increased work of breathing and desaturation we applied CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure. We do try to utilize nasal only devices if possible initially because of the risk of air in the belly and vomit and aspiration and whatnot complications with that also allows the children to have a pop-off out their mouth. The issue with uh, little ones today are the interfaces. There are very few interfaces that are designed and made for pediatric and neonatal patients to be used with the single limb device or the mechanical ventilators outside of the neonatal ICU and things that can be used outside of the hospital as well. So this is uh, a product by SleepNet called Mini-Me. It's one of the smallest nasal interfaces made uh, for us to use here in the United States and what you'll note is it is a vented interface with some holes here for exhalation to occur. With the single limb BiPAP or CPAP devices there needs to be a place for the patient to be able to exhale. So the device would be placed like this and as you can see it fits quite well on this size patient. We do, however, always protect the skin with some form of skin barrier because the constant pressure on the skin does cause redness and breakdown. And if possible, try to use more than one interface on one child and switch back and forth if they're available. You can see on this single limb device that oxygen is added. It can be added into the mask, nasal or full face, if there is a port for it. If not, it has to be added into the uh, hoses that go to the interface. It is somewhat diluted by the huge amount of flow from the air compressor of the BiPAP or CPAP device and it's difficult to get high concentrations of oxygen with this type of a device versus the mechanical ventilator which I'll show you later. So liters per minute here, probably over about five liters a minute. It's very difficult to get oxygen maybe above 30 or 40 percent to your patient with this type of device. Um, Another type of device that can be used when our little patient seemed to not respond well and need more help with worker breathing is a nasal adult mask. This is a petite nasal adult mask which is vented so it's for use with the single limb device and it will fit over the patient's nose and mouth so we can do a full face non-invasive CPAP continuous pressure or bi-level BiPAP ventilation. Obviously then there are more risks with air in the stomach and if there is a gastrostomy tube, venting the stomach would be important. Uh, you may want to place a tube into the stomach through the nose to help with venting. Feeding as you can see would be also, nutrition would be an issue as well that needs to be discussed by the team in what ways you want to put food into the belly of this patient during the illness time. This mask does have a port in which oxygen can be added into the mask itself. When ordering devices, we look for nasal masks that have very small forehead pieces and will actually be able to fit onto the young infant's faces. There is another device that can be used that has a vented elbow, so it can be used on a face, on a face of an infant. And this is called um, a total face mask, Performax. And as you can see, it's a little bit large for this infant here, but this is actually an adult small size and can be used, we've used it on children that are sort of in the one to two year range depending on the facial structure. But it allows us to allow for time for healing if there's a nasal bridge problem. We also, I talked about the fact that we would like to interchange interfaces 
so that we don't have pressure sores in the same spaces on the children. So this also can be strapped on and there have been, there are no reported issues with the eyes in the literature as far as having air there. First we're going to talk about continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP and BiPAP or bi-level positive airway pressure on our little guy here who is about uh, 8 months old and 12 kilograms. He arrived to the emergency room in some amount of respiratory distress, presumably has pneumonia, and uh, was requiring quite a bit of oxygen. So the team felt that they would like to try some CPAP at first and via a nasal interface. We do try to avoid full face if possible because of the risks of aspiration and air into the stomach, not having a pop out of the mouth. So for a little guy like this, there are very few interfaces available for nasal positive airway pressure, but we do have this mask here which is SleepNet Mini-Me, and I'm going to connect it to my single limb device, which would be a CPAP or BiPAP machine typically used in the home as well. And as you can see, this fits quite well onto the nose of our little 12 kilo baby. We are uh, usually preventatively we'll put some kind of a skin barrier, not sure what you have available to you, but some kind of a skin barrier, especially on the bridge of the nose, that's where the, the most of the breakdown tends to occur right away. Now if our little guy seems to be having more trouble breathing and more difficulty and we decide that we need to cover the nose and mouth and offer him BiPAP relief for the worker breathing to help augment the tidal volume, we can use adult nasal mask. This is a petite size adult nasal mask and it can be placed over the nose and mouth to provide ventilation non-invasively with BiPAP. Some of the issues with children this young and this small are that the BiPAP machines are typically made for children over 30 kilograms and the trigger mechanism is unable to function. They're unable to withdraw enough air to get the BiPAP to trigger on. So typically when they're on BiPAP, we do have to set a breath rate that somewhat matches the patient's respiratory rate. And over time, they do become in sync, typically with you know a little bit of time. It could be a rate of 25 or 30 based on the age of the infant or the child. You'll see that this mask has a rather short distance between the brow piece and the nasal piece. Most of the nasal interfaces for adults have a forehead piece, which when you put them on the children is way off the top of the head. This would be a nasal mask that would fit over the nose and mouth of a child, but in fact when you try to strap it on, it's unsuccessful. This is the smallest adult full face mask and you can see obviously way too large for this infant. Now this has been helpful for some large two year olds or so. So we certainly try to use a standard full face mask if we can, but if not, we do use the nasal mask for full face. As far as the skin goes, we try to use more than one interface per child so that we can switch back and forth to prevent a specific pressure sore on the face. This is a mask called Performax, and it does come vented and non-vented, so it can be used with the single limb standard CPAP or BiPAP device, and it can also be used with the mechanical ventilator, which we'll show you in a minute. So this is a little bit large, obviously, for this young, young child, but um, can be used in the two, three, and four-year-olds if their face is appropriately shaped and has been used frequently here for that purpose of giving the nose a break from the pressure on the mask. If the child is large enough, nasal pillows. This happens to be the Swift LT for her, meaning that they made the headgear a little bit more geared towards women, so it's a little bit tapered smaller than the man's one. And I have uh, two and three year old patients that can wear this in their nose, and that again gives you a break from the bridge of the brow for breakdown of skin. I guess I've mentioned skin quite a bit, but it is a very difficult problem with sick children in the hospital requiring CPAP and BiPAP for continuous 24 hours, 24 hours, several days, and skin becomes a problem. And there have been children that we had to intubate because we could no longer use the non-invasive interfaces due to the skin problem. These um, interfaces for single limb devices all have interfaces that are vented. So this one, it's kind of difficult to see, but actually the exhaled gas comes out here on this one called the Mini-Me. The exhaled gas comes out these little holes here. 
So all of these masks do have interfaces to allow for exhalation. Versus when you use your mechanical ventilator dual limb, you need a non-vented interface, and we'll show you those in just a minute. With regard to settings for CPAP and BiPAP, a uh, typical settings for CPAP would be six centimeters of water up to maybe 12 or so centimeters of water. It depends obviously on the child's response to it. If the child is not having a lot of difficulty breathing but having difficulty with oxygenation because of a lung issue with lung collapse, fluid in the lung, something like that, then perhaps we can just raise up the CPAP level and the oxygen level to help them oxygenate better assuming, like I said, that they're not um, retracting and having a very difficult time breathing. With the single lung machine, oxygen is bled in here, and it is difficult to get high percentages of oxygen because the air compressor of the BiPAP machine, CPAP machine, flushes the pure oxygen that you add. So typically, if you have to add more than five or six liters a minute into the machine to get the patient's oxygen saturations up, it's not going to be very successful and you may need to move on to a mechanical ventilator which can give you an exact, a more exact oxygen percentage into the interface for the patient. It also will affect the triggering mechanism if you add high liter flow of oxygen in addition to the flow coming from the standard CPAP or BiPAP machine, it will affect the patient's ability to trigger. As we talked about, that's already an issue with young infants and their ability to trigger this type of device. A settings for BiPAP that would most be re routinely used if you were changing from a CPAP level of six or eight, you would go to a BiPAP level and we want to give the patient um, a delta, a, a change in pressure of about eight or ten centimeters of water between the baseline or CPAP pressure and the inspiratory pressure or IPAP pressure. When we talk about non-invasive devices and single limb devices, we tend to talk about the IPAP, meaning the inspiratory pressure, and EPAP, the expiratory pressure. And that's typically how it's ordered as well, versus when you're using a mechanical ventilator, the equivalent of this IPAP and EPAP on a mechanical ventilator with dual limb would be pressure support ventilation. And we'll show you that next. As you can see, things have changed a little bit for our little guy. We're now utilizing a mechanical ventilator with a dual limb circuit and we're using an anesthesia mask to provide an interface for mechanical ventilation. We could certainly set the machine on pressure support and that would be the equivalent to BiPAP. We could also ventilate the child with pressure control if that were needed at the time. So this interface is non-vented and held on with an anesthesia strap system. We can also use with this a non-vented mask made for children. You can see this is, looks like a CPAP or BiPAP mask that you might see on that website. And this one happens to be non-vented. Most of the non-vented masks are uh, disposable for in-hospital use, so you need to be careful to figure out which mask you have. When you have a dual limb system, you need the patient to be able to exhale through the ventilator to receive the end expiratory pressure. It's different than the single limb system that has high flow. In addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, this Performax mask also comes with a non-vented blue elbow, so it can be used in conjunction with a mechanical ventilator and provide you with non-invasive ventilation. There are a few full face masks that do come now in the non-vented type for larger patients that can be used. They usually specify NV on the, passage for, on the package for non-vented, but they can be used with a ventilator as well. Uh, it's common for us to extubate patients that have had a difficult course on the ventilator directly to non-invasive ventilation immediately and uh, observe them and see how they do initially with some help and then reduce the amount of non-invasive ventilation back to hopefully nighttime only and then off as we transition them back to straight spontaneous breathing. This ventilator also allows you to do 100% pure oxygen because it has a blender in it, unlike the standard BiPAP and CPAP machines used in the home and in some of the hospital facilities. So that this would be the desired way to administer non-invasive ventilation if you had a patient that required a lot of oxygen. So to summarize today, we talked about non-invasive ventilation for children at Children's Hospital here in Boston the way we do it here with our mechanical ventilator and single limb 
BiPAP CPAP device. We talked about the different interfaces that can be used in young and small children in which you need to use nasal adult interfaces as full face for some young children. To try to avoid full face if possible and utilize a nasal device, unfortunately there aren't that many available for you so the fit is, is a challenge. Uh, skin is very, very important to be careful of and look for breakdown and prepare the skin in advance regardless of how long the patient's going to be on. It's good to protect it before you have a problem. The other issues are with feeding because we are putting positive pressure to the airway and it's not a cuffed endotracheal tube in which the air won't necessarily go into the stomach. So we may be administering air into the belly which could be a problem for your patient if they don't have a way to have the belly vented. We do have some children who need to have both an NG tube to, to release air from the stomach and an NJ tube to feed them while they're on long-term non-invasive ventilation. I think in most cases when the child's acutely ill, people would prefer to use intravenous nutrition and stay away from the stomach during the acute phase. But when uh, the non-invasive ventilation is utilized for a long time, then obviously nutrition becomes very important for the patient as well. And uh, I thank you for listening.